Hello and welcome back. The question on today's agenda is, does force feedback strength make a difference to how fast you are? 17 Newton meters versus one Newton meter versus five Newton meters versus 25 Newton meters. At what point does it help you and at what point does it not? We are down at Oran Park in the Formula V. Now, the reason I've chosen the Formula V is that it doesn't have power steering. It's a mechanical uh, drive chain, so rods to st steering arms. There's no hydraulic uh, pressures in there, which are gonna help something like an MX-5 or a GT4, GT3. You will have a uh, hydraulic assist. So I feel like this is a very good direct representation of how this would feel. Uh, Formula V, I find I would run a little bit lighter than something like a, the MX-5, which is a road car, um, a GT3, GT4, uh, something even higher, you may actually run that a little lower because the mod, that car model actually gives you so much more feedback. I, I'm currently running an Imsource 17 Newton meter wheelbase. Um, I run that in the software with 12 Newton meters. Um, you'll be able to see that in the top of the screen here. This is a graph, this is taken directly off the software running the steering wheel. And in iRacing, my wheel force is set to a max of 12 Newton meters. Now I run it at about 5.5 to 6.5 Newton meters as my sort of everyday drive, generally speaking, depending on car. I find that to be a bit of a sweet spot between um, how much feedback I'm getting before I actually start fighting the wheel. So I, I find if I start finding too much heavier, it gets, it gets harder to move around. But potentially, am I leaving some detail behind? Let's find out, let's get it on track. Let's put a lap down uh, on some different settings and let's talk about it and let's see what feels better and what seems to actually make you quicker. All right, as I said, we're running force feedback at 5.5 down here in the black box. This is the one that I actually changed and I've got this set up to one of my, got it set at 5.5 and I have this uh, dialed up to one of my turns. So we can play with that. Let's get on track uh, and let's talk about how it feels. Uh, and we'll put, try to put some comparison laps down with different strengths. 5.5, we've got first session, best lap up. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to try and talk you through what I feel. So currently, I am sort of getting just a constant little bit of vibration through the wheel that's giving me um, road texture. If we pick up pace, so as I'm coming over these bumps, I am feeling these bumps. Let's get over the bridge here. So as this suspension is bouncing and um, compressing, I'm getting all of those bumps through here. I f see, look at that, perfect example. I did feel the uh, under followed by over. I'm getting bumps from the ripples that feel nice. It's a nice vibration through the wheel. But I'm definitely not fighting the wheel. Um, it's very easy to turn. I can feel understeer and oversteer. All right. I don't have enough warmth in the tires. I'm gonna try and drive it about 80% and just see how we go. So 5.5 Newton meters down the straight. Down to second gear, get on the apex. Can feel all those bumps from that curb. Into the second corner. I can feel the understeer there. Definitely feel it if I put it onto the dirt. Well, that's a great example of how well you can catch it and the fact that I can spin the wheel back quite quickly without too much sort of inertia, uh, sorry, weight in it. This is actually a not circuit for this because it's got a lot of bumps and uneven ground. OK, 
keep your eye on that gauge up there and have a look and see what the max amount of force that I've actually got out of the, the wheel is. I think it'll be interesting. I don't think you'll be seeing it go much above maybe two or three newton meters if I was to be taking a guess. All right, a 125. Now let's crank this up. My dial's a little uh, dicky there. <laughs> That's getting uh, a lot heavier. All right, so this is what I've got it set to now is 12 newton meters. That's the max I had it set on the software. We're capable of more. Now, okay, I am 100% getting a lot more force through this car. I won't lie, this is probably how I'd imagine a car like this to be in real life. Um, without ever of dri driving, driving one, my goodness. <laughs> um, I'm feeling that load. I'm, I'm actually, uh, boy, the vibration's huge. I'm actually um, feeling the G load as I come through the corner. You should to see what that gauge is doing. On the brakes. Let's get on that apex. All right, let's try and put a decent lap down and see what we can do. I'm gonna talk you through it. Keep an eye on that gauge, see where we're getting. I mean, the car definitely feels incredibly direct and I can feel every single little bump on the road. It changes the feel entirely of the car. It actually feels like a lot bigger, heavier car now. A lot more serious. I dare say... I almost feel like I'm in contact with the road a lot more, but at the same time, I feel like that um, I am fighting, like there, feel like I am fighting the wheel, um, sort of making this harder for me. See that bump there felt pretty solid, you should can see what that was. So I am concentrating so much on um, on the force on the wheel that it's, it is a little hard to get a lap down. Which is not to say that you couldn't get used to it. Oh, 125, one, all right. All right, now, I'm gonna jump in and crank this all the way up on the software and let's see what this is like. So 17 Newton meters. So I'll actually have to go back into options and turn the max force up to, here we go, 17 Newton meters. That's what my wheel can do. All right, now this I know is gonna be a workout. Oh. Well, that's interesting, road texture. Oh, that's, that's pretty heavy. Is uh, very similar to before, oh, man. What are we making? I think we made nearly eight Newton meters just around that first corner. What are we making on that corner? So you really feel the G's into the corners now. Ugh. Kind of scared of uh, hurting myself, to be honest. 
It's so heavy. What did we peak at on that little incident? We peaked at 10 Newton meters. Now, to me, it does, I know it's not clipping because I know my wheel's 17 Newton meters, but man, it feels like it's, it's so sharp and spiky. This is like, not enjoyable to drive. Like that, around that corner, what are we holding? Eight, nine Newton meters just on, on a flat corner. It's a lot of work. You've been absolutely knackered by the end of a race here. Let's try get a decent lap down. Turn in. I mean, you definitely get a good feel of the car on the brakes. Oh, the car doesn't seem to dance around as much just because you've... I think you're feeling everything so much more. We're we making, yeah, eight, nine Newton meters around the corners seems to be about average. That was the wrong gear from me. It's too busy trying to look at the gauge and talk to it. Oh, through there, man, that's, that's heavy. I don't think I could do a race like this. So much work. And the kickbacks are so strong that you, to try and force the car straight, you're putting so much muscle into it. That I feel like you're, um, you're slowing down because you're not keeping it straight. So just in a flat corner, I peaked out at 10 Newton meters there. We did manage a quicker time though. Not as quick as what I can get around here, but it is interesting. Let's try and bomb it into this corner one more time. Oh. I tell you what, I feel more um, confident under brakes, but my hands are getting sore, Jesus. That's a lot. Oh, I missed a gear. Yet, yeah, people that say that they run more. Man, 10 Newton, actually fighting 10 Newton meters is a lot. Over these bumps, but you do get a good feel when you're sliding. It's just hard to co correct. Oh my God, that nearly took it out of my hands. I'd be interested to know if anyone's actually who watches my videos, actually driven a proper GT3 or GT4, what kind of steering wheel forces do you get? Be very interested to know. Oh, what are we doing? Managed to be up on, I think, every sector there. What do we manage? A 22.85. Now, I'm curious. Let's just bin it into a wall and see what the wheel maps out at. I think I'll hang on, but I'm going to keep my thumbs out of it. Ah! Oh, well. Well, I'm not going to lie. iRacing did a pretty good job of uh, maybe putting a little bit of safety into that. You can see that spike on the graph. It peaked at maybe 11 Newton meters, and I think it just clipped and took it out because it was an incident, which I'm kind of glad because that 11 Newton meter snap pretty much just <laughs> whipped it out of my hands. Uh, yeah, so man, people who say that they run a lot more, that just seems crazy to me. Now, what's interesting too, parked, no oscillation, which is a setting, but that's good. I'm happy about that because sometimes the steering wheel can start fighting itself and vibrating back and forth pretty violently. Now, we're wound down to zero, which is not going to be... Oh, okay, you know what? But, um, so other than the... I uh, have a little bit of inertia in the software, which just gives the steering wheel some, some weight so it's not just completely free spooling, but I mean... As far as I can tell, <laughs> okay, it's, it's a bit ridiculous. Okay, so there's no force feedback at all. 
I'm getting nothing but sound on these ripple strips. Oh, that actually just feels weird. So there's no inertia when you tip in. Normally when you tip in, yeah, okay, so nothing at all on the ripples. When you normally, when you tip in like that, you get that force feedback in like a G-force load to tell you that the car wants to go the other way. So you have to push in harder with this. It's just empty. Um, <laughs> it's easy to drive, but God, there's not just, it just feels numb. Turning in just feels weird. There's just, so that's, I can't tell you how kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like unengaged, it feels, um, I could potentially see how you're quick with this, but... <laughs> Alright, well, let's see what we can actually do. Let's see if I can do anything with this. Oh, that feels terrible. Just turning into... Turning into an apex, man. There's just nothing there at all. It's the weirdest bit. As you, as you get over centre, I think is the bit that's missing. Like the most. And you don't get... I'm only using my eyes for my understeer now, and I, I suppose the sound... Definitely gives me more confidence, interestingly. Ploughing through understeer but I don't think I'd catch it. I'm pretty sure I'm understeering there, but... Well, just, just floating, just floating. Other than throwing time away there, I'm keeping up with uh, session best lap quite comfortably at 122.069. Uh, but, uh, as far as immersion is concerned, man, it's completely nothing. So, I think, in my personal opinion, the sweet spot for at least iRacing in a Formula V, and it would be interesting to know what the difference is between if different wheels handle this a bit different but um i think that sweet spot's around 5.5 to maybe six. Oh yeah see i've got road texture i've got bumps i've got some weight like i get that spring in the steering as i as i tip in there's weight it's it's telling me the car wants to push back out it just feels so much better I think somewhere between 5.5 to 6.5 newton meters is probably about the sweet spot for this kind of car. I don't know what that's like as far as a direct representation of the real thing's concerned, but um, I think for feedback and that information that you need to race, that is, uh, that's what you want. Just, oh, car just feels alive. All right, well, that's enough waffling from me. Um, if you're still here in the video, thumbs up, like it. In the comments, let me know what sort of force feedback you're running. Let me know what sort of wheel, actually. What sort of wheel and what sort of strength, Newton meters wise, you're running uh, and why. I think it'd be a really good conversation. I'm, I'm interested. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.